Hey everyone, Matt from Workshop Tinkers here. It's been requested I go over the electronics that I've used to upgrade my 101 Hero, uh, the first one. And uh, unfortunately, it's going to take several videos to do. So I'm going to do a short series of how to, how to wire up the ramps. Uh, this one I'm just going to go over components and how to assemble it all. I'm not going to assemble it all in front of you, but I'm going to show you what you have to do. So, uh, this is the kit I buy. It comes with the Arduino Mega uh, 2560, the ramps 1.4, bunch of uh, jumpers. It comes with five pull-you knockoff uh, stepper motor drivers, heat sinks. I only have four out here because that's all I'm going to use. And I get the one with the large rep ramp, full graphic smart controller display and uh, adapter and cables needed to use it and of course almost all of them come with this blue USB cable. You don't have to use that USB cable but I figured I'd put it out here. So what is everything here? Uh, real quick, the Arduino, this one is a ASU, ASU uh, whatever, it's not an actual Arduino branded Arduino but it's open source, so they, everyone who wants to can build one. As the correct brain, it works just as well. Uh, I burn these out faster, so I, I, I buy cheap ones because I will do something stupid and over voltage it and burn stuff out. As I said, I've got a bunch laying around of different brands and makes, and they've all pretty much made the same. They all work equally well. I interchange them and all that kind of stuff. The ramps, this is a, uh, I want to say they call it a hat. It sits on top of the Arduino and gives you your interface pins and does things with voltages and I, I don't understand most of it. Or I can understand it if I look it up. The drivers are what actually takes a direction and step pins I believe there's only two pins coming out of here to drive and changes it so it actually keeps track of what circuit is on in the correct order which direction etc etc these are 16 micro step controllers so they'll try to take each physical step and have 16 sub steps in there to give you more resolution they're not true steps, so they're a little fuzzy, but for the most part they work, and it's pretty standard for these 16 step ones. 1 16th, uh, however you want to say it. it mean, it'll, it'll do 16 steps between actual steps on the uh, stepper motor. And then they come with heat sinks, uh, because these do get hot. They'll have an amp at 12 volts running through them, or however much you're willing to risk putting through them. I run most of mine roughly around an amp. Uh, you have two cables for the smart controller. You have the adapter interface which sits on the uh, ramps like so to allow interface to your uh, controller and the controller has the SD card built into it as well as a potentiometer give you a nice menu so that's parts how do you put this together okay so uh, the reason you have these little jumpers is there's three sets of two pins let me bring this up close let you take a look at it each of these uh, let me point each of these sets which you can't really see but there's a small break here here and here, this is a stepper driver. There's five X, Y, Z, E1, E2, or E0, E1. Sorry, I think that's right. They're labeled real small X, Y, Z, E0, E1. Uh, with the three sets of steppers, or how many they're telling the driver how many subset uh, sub steps, micro steps that are supposed to use. It's recommended to fill them all in which is what I do personally because why not uh, if you get up to the 64 128 micro step controllers you might want to change what you do but I don't have any of those those are expensive 
and not that great. Or, well, they're probably fantastic, but as of right now, I either can't or won't use them. And they're like six, seven, eight dollars a piece. They're expensive. And you can see that I put that one on wrong. Okay. So I fill them all. I fill everything up, even the the E1, which I haven't been able to use yet. And I don't generally install the driver for it. So the heat sink comes with a little heat thermal thing on the back. You take this off and verify which one you have, which direction it has to go. Uh, there's a potentiometer on here and it that's generally what's referenced which one goes where. Uh, sorry, I have to take a look at this because I'm not remembering off the top of my head which one is which. Ah, okay. So if you flip it over, it'll tell you. So you got ground and VDD on this corner here, which you can't quite see, but in that corner there, so you line them up that direction. So in this case, the pot, the potentiometer, that square, that circle with a, it's meant to put a, a screwdriver in there and twist it goes towards the display away from the power. As I said, that might change depending on your exact steppers. So that's how you install one of those and then you uh, peel and stick. I like to put them all in the same direction and keep and think about how my fan's gonna blow across it if I'm gonna have a fan. Generally when I have a fan it blows across the board that away. So that's how I assemble it. And you Take it off and as you see it has pins. These pins will line up with the sockets. Like make sure it's right the whole way around and yeah this can be a little tricky and I bend the crap out of these pins almost always. They always get bent up. Do 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 if you do it right it and it doesn't help that this one actually it's uh not squared. It so these are probably assembled by hand in China somewhere. So do what you got to do to get them straight and plugged into the correct spot. I'm just looking, making sure that they're lining up and going up because like that they missed. Just got to make sure that they go in. And yeah, sometimes you have to use a little bit of excessive force. To get them to go in there. Okay, is it going? <sighs> okay, make sure they're all going in. Press down. And yeah, that first alignment can sometimes be difficult. Oh, and while I'm thinking of it, you're you have another option instead of a, a mega. This is a rearm. Four ramps. This is designed to be a drop-in replacement for the uh, Mega, but this is a 32-bit processor running SmoothieWare. I really like this board, but you can get knockoff. I, I'm I'm going to order a knockoff SmoothieWare controller from China for the same price, just to compare because I really like this, but maybe it's better. I don't know because I don't really care for ramps other than for doing this there's another one I prefer which is called a Pika but it's double the price for the Pika alone without anything else than for this entire kit this entire kit costs about $20 shipped so that's it you do that four more times or three more times and if you want to fill in the E1 I haven't I don't have anything with dual extruders that's if you have two extruders on a single printer and this goes there, you plug these in and plug them in, make sure everything is pointing the right way. You have one and two, one and two, or one and two, and yeah, it all lines up and you'll, you'll be able to see how it works. Uh, all these instructions are online already in a lot of places. So if you don't like me talking about it, I'm not going to be offended, go, go look it up. I, I do, all the time. 
So some of the other parts of this ramp that you have to be aware of. Uh, I'm just going to go around uh, this power adapter. I don't like it. I cut it off and replace it uh, with something a bit more robust because these are a failure point. These, these like to burn. They, they're not big enough for the amperage that's carried across them. Just a warning, uh, these are generally a failure point. Same with these. It's not uncommon to unsolder them and solder something better like uh, blade terminals or something in its place. But these are what always come with these cheap ramp sports. Uh, so you have three sets here. These are meant to be uh, extruder, extruder bed, heated bed, or extruder heated bed uh, controllable fan. How you control that is completely up to you. You choose which board works until the display and everything works and you just set these up in Marlin. I will be going over Marlin at some point. The other thing that you need to know, so there's two other things. There's sets of four, 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 eight pins. Those are for your stepper drivers. The eight one is for the Z because a lot of uh, the normal XYZ Cartesian style printers uh, have two C steppers just so you don't have to have some complicated thing with belts and whatever. Uh, so it's very common to have two sets. Uh, the 101 Hero only uses one. That's normal. The other one is these sets of three here and a four on top. These are your end sensors. There should be six of them. X min, X max, Y min, Y max, Z min, Z max. Uh, look up this order. I can never remember. Ever. I usually have something printed out. I can't find them right now. Unfortunately, they're not labeled. But something to keep in mind. These are three. This, is, this will support powered stop end stop sensors. If you're using the 101 Hero, you do not need this row here, the centermost row. It is voltage plus. You need sensor and ground. Sensor and ground. And unfortunately, the sensors, uh, cables, if I can get one over here, don't really fit on there. I make adapters for these uh, with just pins that go into these two slots, the outer two and a socket and just a little couple inches long. Uh, there are other ways around. Either you pull out those sockets and just put them on and use a dab of hot glue to keep them in place. Make your own cables, cut off the end, just put a proper end on there. All that kind of stuff. The other thing to think about, to keep in mind with the 101 Hero, if you're doing this for the 101 Hero, standard end stops are always closed circuit, meaning the circuit is continuously having power going through it until they're actuated then they open. So it breaks the circuit. The 101 Hero is opposite. It is an open circuit until it's actuated then it closes the circuit sending power through. Uh, so when you're adjusting Marlin if you're not using one that's just already proven to be working you have to invert the logic. Uh, I believe that's everything. There are some other parts that if you're doing a 101 Hero, you won't use. I don't actually know what the aux here is. These are for servos. If you have actuators to extend a Z-probe or something like that, but if you're doing this for the 101 Hero, you don't have that. You don't have to worry about it. There are other pins. If you want to find out how they work, what they work, you need to look them up. I don't know. I've never used them. I've only used this ramps a couple of times before. Uh, as I said, I like the uh, Pika, but even that, I don't know electronics. I can follow instructions, and I'm trying to give better instructions for other people that hopefully make sense. So that's the board. That's it for today. I will continue with how to plug it all in and get it working with the 101 Hero specifically. This will also work for pretty much every 3D printer out there. But you have to adjust it yourself. If, if you're doing something, you're just making some printer that you've got work or you're building one from scratch, um, 
it, this will work for it as long as it only has five axes, meaning extruders count as axes. Uh, you're good. If you have more advanced, why are you watching my videos? I'd love to learn more from you. But <laughs> all joking aside, this does 99% of 3D printers out there. If you're doing more than that, you know more than me, quite frankly. So uh, that's it today. I will follow up with another one shortly, hopefully. Uh, otherwise, stay safe, keep tinkering, and if you burn out these boards, they're $5. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Have fun, guys.